one of the best ways to make your resume stand out as a newbie analyst is to make sure you have that right mix of theoretical and hands-on skills. In this video, we're gonna talk about what things you should skip, what things you should include, and what things you should work on long-term to make that resume stand out like a sore thumb in the pile of thousands and thousands of resumes that you're competing against today for all those jobs. So stay tuned, we're gonna dive right into that. Yeah, breaking into cybersecurity is getting tougher and tougher every day. It's not impossible, it's tough, it's challenging, but you can do it with the right help from industry people like myself. I've been in this industry for 10 years, I have 18 certifications, and yeah, I know a thing or two about how to break into cybersecurity. So take, take my advice. I'm a hiring manager myself. These are things that I look for that help me find great, great talent. So one of the things I just want to start this video out with is tell you as a hiring manager, what I'm doing when I'm looking at resumes is I'm looking for people that I have to spend the least amount of time on training, right? The further along you are in your pathway in cybersecurity, the more likely I'm, I'm going to hire you for a junior level role. And that's simply because training takes time. You're already investing in yourself. That means I have less I have to invest and I'm more willing to invest in you because, well, you already invested in yourself so it's great I love to see this and we want to make that pop in that resume so when they pick it up they're like oh this person is amazing let's go ahead and have a chat with them so the first thing we want to do is that in our resumes we want to just trim down all the stuff that isn't relevant right if you worked as a cashier in a grocery store we don't really care just put it on there maybe one bullet at the most we don't really care it's not relevant so we want to trim that down because we don't want an overly large resume first off but we want to trim all this down so that as we start adding this other stuff i'm about to talk about we have room for it, obviously on the resume so that's one get rid of crap condense all the stuff that doesn't matter to leave room for the stuff that does matter so that's step number one. Step number two here, many of you are gonna be in college. So if there are any relevant courses to the, to the role you're applying for, feel free to list them. So if it's a stock analyst role, make sure you're listing if you've done a forensic course, if you've done malware analysis, any of that type of stuff, if it's relevant, list it. It's good to see, good to show that you've done this coursework. If this is all you have, <laughs> they're not gonna look at your resume, probably. You're gonna to have to add some of this other stuff. So let's keep going. So we want to list relevant course material. Now, next thing is we need to get a theoretical certification. This is required on your certification. Well, I don't want to say required, but it's almost required. If you don't have a foundational cybersecurity certification, you are in trouble. I always recommend the Security Plus. There are other ones out there, and there may be reasons for you to consider those as well, such as you can get it for free. You know, Maybe they're the one that your college supports, and it's from part of course material. Who knows? So you have several out there you have google cybersecurity certification that's one you have sscp from isc square that's another one and there's several others on here i don't want to dig through all of them but they're a good bit any of these will work but again i recommend security plus watch my video if you want to know why i recommend this one as the go-to but again any of these will work we just want one certification i encourage you not to overindulge in foundational material because you're just repeating the same stuff over and over and it is not an efficient use of your time so recommend you don't get more than one of these certifications get one move on now the other thing is you're going to be working in a lab somewhere whether that's hack the box try hack me any of those you're going to be working and you have to you have to start getting hands-on experience with the tools that you're gonna use as a professional. There's no way around it today, the competition's so stiff. If you're not doing this, you're not getting a job. It's not happening, unless you know somebody that's willing to give you a chance, it's not happening. So you need to be getting in these labs, and when you do, make sure an additional education and training section on your resume, if you don't have one, make it by the way, you're gonna be adding in these pathways. So they have pathways of multiple modules. So I say don't do the modules because the pathways are better, right? They require hours and hours of work to do and they're teaching you stuff. So add those pathways. There's a SOC 1 pathway in both of these, both Try Hack Me and Hack the Box. So check that out. 
If you're in pen testing, check out the pen testing one. But list all these pathways that you're doing. There's probably forensic ones, whatever specialties you want to go down, list them in here because they're going to be great. People want to see what you're doing. This stands out. Again, it shows that you're investing in yourself, you're learning, and it's going to take you less time for me to train because you already have a lot of these foundational skills. Now, the next thing and the final point I want to tell you about honing this resume to get the eye of a hiring manager is that you need a technical certification as well. So we have theoretical, we have pathways, so we're learning, but we also need a hands-on certification. So I won't lie, the theoretical certifications, you can't do much with that. You don't learn the skills that you need to actually do any of the cybersecurity jobs out there. They're specialties. We need a deep set of knowledge in a specific area to do it well. So that is where the technical certifications come in handy. So if you're going in the SOC, I always recommend the, what is it, Blue Team Level 1. Uh, that is probably the most well-known SOC 1. But Try Hack Me has a certification as well. Hack the Box has one. Any one of these will work. Just do them, work through it, get the certification, put it on your resume, and you should be good to go. So with all of these things, right, with a your condensed resume, you showing off all this additional work that you've done, both technical, theoretical certifications, you should have a really eye-catching resume that should help you land a job wherever you're applying. Now, will it be 100%? No, but your chances of success are way, way, way higher. These are the things, again, I look for as a hiring manager. All right, with that, let's wrap this video up. I wish you success on your journey. Please let me know in the comments what you did to break into cybersecurity, what your favorite certifications are, and what are you working on today? Like, share, and subscribe, all that fun stuff. If you want hands-on modules, I actually work through Try Hack Me and Hack the Box Live on Thursday evening, 6 to 9 Eastern time. And there you can ask questions. We can work on stuff and look at stuff that you're actually working on today. Uh, and and ask you, yours truly questions and we can help you work through any problematic areas. So with that, let's end the video. We'll see you next time.